Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of the Voip Guys. Um, last time around, we took a look at or introduced the subject of cool distribution. Mm -hmm. And um, we found some drawbacks with the scenario we'd set up. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to have a look at uh, today at how we can make that scenario much better. Mm -hmm. um, and we need a sort of tool for that. Mm -hmm. Matthias, explain. That's true. Uh, last time we did the poor man's solution, we mm -hmm. just used the dial command right. and put two peers together. Okay. And that's it. Um, we discussed mm -hmm. about the drawbacks and so on. So uh, today we want to use a new object in asterisk, which okay. is new to, not new to asterisk, but new to us. Okay. <laughs> um, that's called the queue. Okay. Um, which can do very great call distribution and yeah. knows the concept of members and you can log into a queue, log out of a queue and so on and so on. So it provides you with a bit of a dynamic aspect to your... Dynamic aspect and you can easily just choose different call distribution strategies. Uh -huh. So it's really cool and easy. Intelligent call distribution. Yeah. Yeah. Fair right. enough. Okay. So take it away. How do we do it? Okay. First thing is we... Um, edit the file, which is called queues. Queues. Dot com. As every uh, time, it is a very long file because the documentation is in there, and uh, that's a good thing. But mm -hmm. I think it's confusing if you want to start. Okay. So, as in any case, uh, we just copy it and save it for documentation issues. To queues.conf.org or something like this. Okay. Then we do our famous trick. We used it before. We say remove all the documentation lines. Then it's <laughs> <laughs> a little bit shorter. Yeah, just a little bit. So, as in every file we had a look at uh, so far, it's the same concept. You mm -hmm. have a general section. A general section configures some settings for all queues. Okay. Um, and then you can have a specialized section, which is the queue itself, and okay. you can define some um, special configuration just for this queue. Okay. As always, you just use uh, square brackets. Yeah, and you put in the name of the queue you want. Last time we talked about support, so mm -hmm. continue that scenario, and this is the support. So for now, our queue does nothing mm -hmm. and has all the default options. Okay. Believe me, there are more than 100 options you can set in a queue. Okay. And they are just all default values now, and mm -hmm. I think they are just okay to understand it. Right. And I don't want to start with all the parameters mm -hmm. because maybe you get confused and you don't know what's the concept behind it. Right. And then uh, the knowledge of the parameter parameters is worthless for you okay, because so you did not get the concept. Start off with a sort of a basic mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. introduction. As simple as possible. We just want to replace our poor man's solution with okay. the queue, but we won't enhance it for now. Still <laughs> keeping it simple, yeah. stupid. Okay, yeah. good. <laughs> That's what we are able to. <laughs> so, um, the most important, um, not option, but line you can add here is member. And then you just can define a member. For example, the zip here, James is a member of that queue. Okay. You can put in there everything you could also use in a dial command. Uh -huh. You have in the dial command the dial string where you say technology and something. Mm -hmm. So in our case, zip and the peer name is James. Yep. But you could also do um, Ajax, which is the interisk, inter asterisk exchange protocol. Okay. Or you can use another local channel, or you could use um, some of the uh, Ditium asterisk cards uh -huh. for ISDN or analog landlines. Okay. So you can just address everything you can also use in a dial Dark string. Mind. Okay. Cool. Okay, so that's it for us. We only have zip peers um, for that, and I can repeat the member line as often as I want to. Mm -hmm. Maybe there is some limitation, but <laughs> I don't know. Um, just repeat the members. Yep. And then that's the way you add members to your support queue 
uh, persistent. Okay. You, we will have a, a look at the dynamic stuff later on, but this is the first thing we do. And as I uh, said before, I just want to replace our poor man's solution, and this does exactly the same. Right. Call two members. Okay. So I try to get out of here. Then I go to the asterisk console. And here we have the command uh, Q. It's a really hard word for me. If you just <laughs> press tab, then you see all the available commands. And then you can say reload. And you can reload only the members, only parameters, only rules or everything. Because we are beginners for now, we say all. Okay. Then it just reloads. Uh, the queue. If you did that, you can access the queue we just created. So queue show. And now you could sh display the rules. We will talk about rules and stuff later. Mm -hmm. We don't need them for now. But also our queue appears, which mm -hmm. we call support. And I can have a closer look um, to the queue support if I do it like this, queue show support. And then I have some interesting information in there. For me, I think it's interesting. Maybe somebody else also thinks it's interesting. Support has zero calls. That means there are no calls yet. Um, it's unlimited, so the queue can handle as much callers as the CPU is able to handle. I yeah. don't know. There mm -hmm. is, for, of course, some limitation. The strategy is ring all. That means ring all members at once. So parallel ringing. Yeah, parallel ringing, mm -hmm. as we did in our poor man's example. Yeah. Um, we have an average hold time of zero seconds, as average talk time of zero seconds. And um, here are also some statistic datas. Um, all the statistic datas are automatically filled mm -hmm. if you use the queue. Sometimes it takes a while until the statistic data uh, could be uh, filled uh, automatically. Mm -hmm. So um, there has to be a kind of a load in the queue before some parameters like the um, um, average wait time, for example, mm -hmm. could be distributed. It takes a while. Okay. So, but you can use this, for example, to tell the caller which mm -hmm. position they're in, mm -hmm. uh, how long they have to wait, and all mm -hmm. this kind of stuff. Okay. Stuff yeah. like this. Mm -hmm. At our default settings, not, because yeah. we just give the caller a ringtone. Yeah. We could play music and so on, and mm -hmm. I don't know. But for now, we just... Um, um, the, uh, we just have the ringtone for mm -hmm. the caller and he calls our two members. Here you can see the member list. Yep. Member is technology SIP, Pierre James, Matthias, and that's it. Um, you could see they are not in, in use and you did not take any call yet and I also did not take any call yet. Okay. So not much to do in our support team. No. <laughs> That's the one thing you have to do. You have to define the queue. Okay. Um, you can compare it to, you have to define the voicemail box before you can use it. Of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the next thing is you need an application in your dial plan which says now um, put the caller into the queue. Okay. As always, if you need an application, we can ask asterisk for the application. Core show application. Um, Q. As you can see here, it's a very powerful application. And you could um, provide many parameters. Q, um, Q name, so I have to put in support there. Some other options which are described here, an URL, an announcement override. You could do some things, things from outside. Um, but I think one of the most important things is the timeout. You can say, if I open a queue, uh -huh. how long should the caller stay in there? Okay. Because okay. it does not matter for the system. If there is no member, then the caller just waits. And waits and waits and, and waits. waits and waits and waits for the timeout. You right. can change that behavior. You can change almost everything. But timeout is an important parameter yep. for us, for now. If I have such a... Yeah, many options I can put there. I just copy mm -hmm. the line out of the documentation and put it as a comment in my dial plan uh -huh. to remember how to set the parameters. Okay. Mm. 
Now it's time for the diet plan. And here is still our solution of the last tutorial. In there, if I call the number uh, extension 300 and it goes to 300 uh, to the internal system. And here you can still see our solution, dial Matthias and James at once. Yep. So I just put in my line for documentation here. And now I say same next Q <laughs> gotcha and support. then I uh, provide the Q name which is support and then I provide no options no URL no announcement override but the timeout with everything right options URL announcement override timeout Okay. So you can now see that it's really useful to have yeah. documentation <laughs> here. If you have more screens and stuff, you could for sure put it on the other screen or in the browser. But for our video, I think it's the best solution to just have the okay. line in there. That's it. I throw the caller into the support queue. It should do something, we will see. Mm -hmm. And all that for maximum of 120 seconds. Okay. If the call is not taken in within that uh, timeout, we just hang up. So that's what we try. Let's give it a go. Mm -hmm. Here we need to reload the dial plan again. And we will run into an error, which we will fix. Um, we tried it before, um, a log file issue. Okay. But it's not um, very important for the functionality, but for the logging. Okay. So we will just try it as is. I call the queue. You can see um, I am now in the queue. I just get the ringtone, but James gets a call and Matthias gets a call. And here you can see he just calls the members. Now something happens, nobody pick up for 15 um, seconds. Uh -huh. So the queue takes the call back into the queue right. and has a new look for the distribution and distributes the calls again. Okay. Because the ring strategy is ring all, it will again call Matthias and James. Uh, but think uh, about another ring strategy. For example, uh, if it first calls you and then it calls me or something. Sequential calling or something, yeah. yeah. Okay. Something like mm -hmm. this. Then it would call you, but you're not on, on your uh, desk because you want yeah. to smoke. I don't know. <laughs> no, you're not long, no longer smoking. Yeah. Um, but you, you're doing something and then it would call you very, very long. Mm -hmm. until the timeout of the queue. Yep. But no, after 15 seconds, it, it goes stops back me to the queue. And goes back and then calls you. And then it calls me, yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. that makes sense. And there are many people which do not understand what is the timeout. This is called <coughs> the agent timeout. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how long do I try to call an agent? Okay. And then go to the next one. Fair and enough. the default is 15 seconds. Uh -huh. Okay. So you can see, it's really trying to get <laughs> someone on the phone. <laughs> and I just have to hang up the initial call and then it ends. Uh -huh. So it's just a more intelligent replacement for our initial setup. Fair enough. Okay, cool. Nicely done. Yeah. So next time we will have a look at all the parameters, what we can do else, how we can enhance it, how okay. we can play music on old and So there you, ha there you have it. Next time we get into the nitty gritty of the calls uh, queuing system. And yeah, thanks so much for watching. Until next time. See Goodbye. you.